All right, today we're going to be in the book of Joshua. If y'all have your Bibles, you want to turn to Joshua chapter 3, verses 1 through 15 is where we're going to start at. You know, what a wonderful book this is right here. What a wonderful message that God's given us through it. You know, Brother Sisters Abraham was called by God to live in the land of Canaan, but Joshua was called to possess that land. He had a motive, a motive, a, a reason put out there from, by God. And he took it seriously. It was a charge that he took it seriously. And indeed, his obedience was so exemplary that at the end of his life, he was granted the title Servant of the Lord. Isn't that something? Servant of the Lord. And uh, an honor accorded only to a few in the history of Israel. What's more, his lifetime of leadership provided a legacy that lived on in the elders who followed him. And brothers and sisters, they just we need to be the Joshua's. You know, God has given us our marching orders. Amen? Amen. You know, a commission of conquest at a time when the Holy Spirit didn't yet constantly indwell in the faithful, God identified Joshua as a man in whom this is the Spirit. And that's the title I'd like to have. I want to be known as the man who is within the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, who, who, who is the Spirit. This is how evident God was in Joshua's life. Once Moses laid hands on Joshua before Eliezer, the priest and the people, his commission was official, he would be the one to take the children of Israel into the promised land. And the promised land was, was walked into. Amen? Amen. Oh, I gotta, I mean, I'm reading some of this stuff right out of my Bible in here and I've got to tell you. The themes of Joshua, of Joshua all point to one underlying message. Yahweh is a promise-keeping God. Amen. Amen. Our God is a promise-keeper. He does not quit. He does not fail. He does not lose. He keeps His promise. And He's with us constantly forever. Amen. Amen. Just as the, the people of Israel changed and were able to cross the Jordan. Now, we're going to be in, in Joshua 3, 1 through 5 here. And live victoriously in the land of Canaan. That's a victory, y'all. The same can happen in our lives right now. Do you, do you wonder? Do you have doubts? Yes, sir. Our God's an awesome God. He's a promise keeper. Amen? Amen. Now listen. Now's the time to exchange wilderness wanderings for walking in spiritual victory. Amen? Right. Do you want the victory? Yeah. Amen. We want the victory. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, the day the Lord does miracles in your life is coming. And some may have experienced already. Have you experienced a miracle in your life? Yeah. Well, he is a man, he's a God of miracles. I Amen. I see the hands up, I see the way. Hallelujah. And uh, do you believe in miracles? God does. And for 40 years, them Israelites lived in despair and defeat. They were faithless, fruitless, and failed to realize God's plans in their lives. Uh, duh, I see that right now. How many of us feel the same way? Man, faithless, fruitless, and failed to realize? Been there, done that. I ain't there no more. I may not be where I want to be, but praise God, I'm not where I was. Amen. And I hope everyone, I put every one of y'all can say the same thing. In one day's time, one day, they were transformed from wandering in the wilderness to walking through the water and winning wars for God and I. Walking through the water? We're going to talk about something else here that y'all hadn't thought of in a while. He took them from being wilderness wanderers to Canaan conquerors. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Significant and mighty things happened to the nation of Israel. Significant and mighty things are going to happen to the nation of the United States. Amen. Significant and mighty things are going to happen worldwide, y'all. It's coming. Amen. And I want you to be aware it's coming. I want you to be prepared for the, for the war we're fighting right now. It's spiritual. It ain't boots on the ground so much as it's spiritual. Spiritual. And what is our weapon? Prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer to a God who hears our prayers and listens. Like, likewise, some of us, we've been living on a desert diet. Amen? Oh, yeah. you. Yeah. And we've been deprived. We have not come to that place of full victory in the Lord Jesus Christ, but we're moving, ain't we? Amen. Just as the people of Israel changed and were able to cross the Jordan, conquer Jericho, and live victoriously in the land of Canaan, it can happen in our lives as well in Joshua 3. We see the river of miracles and experience. We experience the waves of God's truths. It's strong. God, our God was powerful then. 
He God is our powerful God yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. These things don't change, brothers and sisters. Right. Listen to me. Now is the time to exchange wilderness wanderings for walking in spiritual victory for ourselves. Amen. The first way the truth we should comprehend is the requirements for miracles. I'm going to have a four-point sermon today. The requirements for miracles. There must be a positioning. You hear me? A positioning of Christ in your life. In Joshua 3, verse 3, and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God with a Levitical priest carrying it, you shall set out from your place and go after it. You go after it. You follow it. Amen? <laughs> For 40 years, 40 years the nation of Israel had possession of the ark of the covenant. And in Joshua chapter 3, the Ark of the Covenant is mentioned ten times. Ten. Well, what's different now? What's different now? The nation of Israel had gone from simply possessing the Ark to positioning the Ark. For 40 years, everywhere they went, the Ark of the Covenant followed the nation of Israel. Now, they're going to follow the Ark. They put it first. Amen? Amen? Before they had possession of it, now they have positioned it. Have you positioned God in your life? Yes. Woo! You, you smell what I'm sipping in? Yeah. This is awesome, y'all. This is words from God to tell us. If we want the miraculous power of God to be manifested in our lives, we must make Him the master of every area of our lives. Amen? <laughs> Many times we treat the Lord like a hitchhiker. And some of us, I see a few heads come up. What are you talking about, Pastor Tater? Well, we pick Him up and we put Him in the passenger seat. But Jesus wants to be the driver. Okay. Amen? Amen? He wants it. When we make Him the master of our lives and let Him drive, we we'll want to go wherever He goes. We want to follow. We want Him positioned in front of us. Amen? The Ark of the Covenant is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what was in the Ark of the Covenant? Let me tell you right quick. Manna was one thing. It represented the provision of Christ for He is the bread of life. Amen? Amen. What else? Aaron's rod that budded, which represented the resurrection power of Christ. And the Decalogue, which represented the perfection of Christ before Jesus, never, because He never once sinned, not once. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that powerful? Isn't that awesome? And then most of all, He contained the mercy seat. The mercy seat, which represented the pardon of Christ. God had a design a direction, and a day for the children to move across the Jordan and into the land of Canaan. God also had a direction, a design, and a day for His people to move into the land of victory, abundance, and revival. Are we not His people? We are His people, brothers and sisters. We're His children. We need to get into Canaan and experience the miraculous power of God in our lives. Woo, keep on trucking. we got our marching orders. We need to go wherever God goes. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Let me hear you. Amen. We need to come to the place in life where we follow Jesus and quit trying to make Jesus follow us. Amen. Yeah. We must always love God more than our gold and our Savior more than our silver, brothers and sisters. Right. We must love Jesus more than our jobs. Right. And that's a downfall for many people. Their jobs are coming first. Their jobs are taking precedent priority over God. We must, we must love Christ more than our cash. We must love the Lord more than our lands. We need to love God with everything we have. First, put Him in front follow God. Amen? Amen. There must also be a purifying, a purifying of Christians. In Joshua 3, 5, then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves. Y'all see it up there? The time existed when Christians seemed more conscious of fleeing the things of the world. There was a time when they didn't pay that much attention, didn't want to be into the things of the world. It appears now, and I see this, you see this, and it's undeniable, it appears we want to please man and appease God. That's not the way to do it, brothers and sisters. That's not going to work. We don't want to be too fanatical, too excited, or too different. Yet Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves. 
Be different. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm different. Y'all can tell. I'm different. But I popped out and my mama said he's different. <laughs> and I've held to it ever since. Praise God. Amen. 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 <laughs> we too need to sanctify ourselves in our hearts, in our minds, in our homes, in every area in our lives in the sight of God Almighty. Do you agree? Amen. Too many times we treat Jesus like a spare tire. We only call on Him when we only have times of difficulties and problems when we're flat. Amen? Later, we put Him back in the trunk. How about that? And we think we'll call on Him when we need Him again. Yeah, He's there. We just call Him when we want Him. We should not presume upon the goodness, grace, and greatness of God. Amen. Amen. We're to live a daily life that is pleasing to Christ. And daily, we are to sanctify our hearts and our lives before God Almighty. Amen. Before we're ever going to be powerful to God, we must first be pleasing to God. Now that ought to hit home. That ought to go down deep. Are you pleasing God? Are you pleasing to God? We come, we've got to come to a place where we can purify our lives in the sight of God and let Him take us to the river of miracles and place us in the land of abundance, blessings, and victorious Christian living. And that's coming. You know, there's going to be a time when there's a new world order. There's, one, there's going to be one world order. That time ain't yet. It's not their time yet. It's not the, the enemy has been defeated. But that day's coming, but not now because God's going to, he's going to, he's going to revive this land. I know he's going to revive. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says that because we have humbled ourselves, he seeked our face, we've repented for, we confessed our sins. Amen. He's going to cleanse our land. Israel and the United States. He's going to, it's going to be rebuilt. It's going to come down. It's going to be good. He's going to take care of it. He's running out the evil. He's taking care of the corrupt right now. That's a promise from God. It's not the end day. We're in the end times. There's going to be a revival in this country, in this nation. And it's not just the United States. It's not just America. It's worldwide in the nations, brothers and sisters. God is God over all nations. All nations. Not just ours, but we are favorites with Him. Amen? God in Israel. Woo! There must be a position of Christ. I pray God will move His church today into the promised land of abundance, blessing, and victory living. And there is no physical power, there's no political power, there's no social power, no spiritual power that can stop the church of the Lord Jesus Christ from possessing His possessions in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Nothing can stop. Nothing can stop what's coming. <coughs> now, I'm going to get down to another one. The realities of miracles. Tomorrow, in, in 3, 5, it says, Tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Ho, ho! When's tomorrow? It's coming, amen. Yeah. That's a promise He made. And He showed His people earlier. He'll show His people now. You won't have any problems dealing with the miracles if you believe in God. Do you believe in God? Amen. Yeah. Some say God is a prisoner to the laws of nature. However, they're not the laws of nature. They're the laws of God. And God is not in a prison to the laws of nature. Amen. God can do whatever He wants Whenever he wants to do it, and however he wants to do it, and nothing can hinder him, nothing can stop him. Do y'all hear me? Yeah, that's our God. <clears throat> Still, others ask, how can we explain miracles? If we could explain miracles, then it wouldn't be miracles. That's true. Oh, duh. <laughs> the only way we can understand them is to realize they are from God. Yeah, right. The only way we can explain them is to explain God. If we could do that, then our God wouldn't be a very big God, would He? Our God is Almighty God. Our little old finite minds, we can't comprehend it. The infinite abilities of the Almighty God. We can't comprehend that. God has a design and God has a will. He wants to show the world He's still alive among His people. Right. Amen? Amen? You know, you heard of Albert Einstein? Many believe he was the smartest, most intelligent man who ever lived. Yet Einstein said, not long before he died, that he hoped one day to understand the electricity. Although we don't fully understand electricity, 
We don't need to sit in the dark until we do understand it. Amen? We, we do not leave the lights off or say God can't perform miracles just because we don't understand it. We don't have to understand miracles. He's going to show us. Miracles have happened from day one. From the day of creation of this earth. Joshua said to his people in verse 5, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Now I don't know how weak you may be, but I know how wonderful God is. Amen? Amen. I don't know how many problems you face, but I know how powerful He is. He has more solutions than we have problems. Got that? Yeah, that's right. We need to understand that God's power is being manifested in our hearts. And we can live victoriously in this, this world we're in now. Amen? Amen? God desires to break in and break through this, to show this world His power and His glory one more time. That's what I'm telling you. That day, that day is coming, but not yet. There's going to be things happening. And brothers and sisters, I'm telling you right now, in the next three, four months, the next year, next you're going to see things you never thought you'd see. Things are going to be revealed by our God that you never thought would be revealed. That you, He's going to have a hard time understanding. But you don't have to understand completely. Just put your faith in God. Amen. And He will show you. He will reveal to you what it is. You need that understanding. Do not lose your focus from God because it's going to get rough. But it's going to get better. We don't have to worry about our tomorrows or our difficulty because God's going to perform miracles. He sees that now. This is something He sees from. He sees the end from the beginning. Does that make sense to you? He sees it all. He knows it all. He hears it all. He sees the end from the beginning. He knows it all. He understands it, and He wants to perform miracles in our lives. And bring glory to His holy name. We're not talking about back then now. We're talking about right now. We're talking about now. He's going to show us miracles that we can give glory to His holy name. And the reason for those miracles. Third point. He will direct through uncharted paths. I'm going to jump over to Joshua. Chapter 3 verse 4 says, And we read that you may know by the way which you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. We didn't put that up, or I just told that in there. You may know by the way in which you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. And Joshua was saying, we need to follow the ark because we have never been this way before. Amen? Amen. We have not, brothers and sisters. We need to follow the ark if we're going to go through Jordan into Canaan. We must keep our eyes on Jesus, not the water of worry, but on the ark, the Almighty. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're not river watchers. We're ark watchers. Amen. If I hear snoring after, I'm gonna come right amongst you and lay hands on somebody. We must get our eyes off our problems. We have to get our eyes off our tests. We have to get our eyes off the trial and get our eyes on to God who'll direct us through those uncharted paths in order to reach the land of victory. Amen. Pray more, worry less. That's a hard pill to swallow, isn't it, for some of you worry warts? Don't be a wart, worry, wart, be a warrior. Not a warrior, a warrior. Go to war for the Lord. Miracles preceded most every Old Testament, New Testament time when the Lord did something new among His people. Amen? Amen. Something new is coming to us, y'all. In Joshua 3, something new was about to happen for the children of Israel. And something new is about to happen to us. Amen. For us. We too are about to see tremendous supernatural accounts of God's work in our lives. He's going to direct us to those uncharted paths. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. He's, I feel Him talking. Amen. He's, it's, it's coming to us, brother. Said, "Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready to go through that uncharted path?" Yes. He will discern an unusual problem. In Joshua three seven, it says, "Now the Lord said to Joshua." This day will I begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. God telling you, brothers and sisters, just as He's been with them, He's going to be with you Amen. through it all, through every moment, every breath. Amen. Amen. That ought to get you excited. God simply said to Joshua, He was going to confirm His word and Joshua's leadership. Amen. Yes. That's our God talking. 
The world needs to be shown the fact that the Word of God is real. Right. The Word of God is relevant. That's right. And the Word of God is resourceful. Yes, it is. God will help and strengthen and save and heal all who trust His Word. Do you need some of that? Amen. Amen. He'll confirm the preaching of His Word. He will discern for us an unusual problem. And here, here, listen to me. He will demonstrate an unstoppable power. Yes. That's our God. Amen. In Joshua 3.10, we read Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that He will assuredly dispossess from you before the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Hivite, the Perizzite, the Girgashite, the Armorite, and the Jebusite. There's a lot of ice in there, isn't there? Yeah. Woo, but he's telling them all. He's telling them the way it is. Without fail, without hesitation, without fail, God will drive out everything that is in the land, everything evil. God will drive out the Canaanites of carnality. We got it. He'll drive out the high types of hurt. He'll drive out the high bites of hate, the parasites of pain, and the Gergesites of guilt, the Amorites of anxiety, and the Jebusites of jealousy. God will drive out all oh, amen so we can live that car slave, y'all. That's our God. And He can do it. He will do it. We ain't seen with nothing yet. We nothing can stop what's coming. That's right. And the Lord Jesus Christ, He is an unstoppable power. Oh. He promised to clear the way for His people to enter Canaan. Didn't He? Yes. He wants us to have the victory in every hour of our lives. And this will be done through the miraculous powers of God. Amen. 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 Shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Jesus. <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell you about the rewards Woo. of the miracles. <laughs> the rewards. So far, we've learned the requirements. We talked about the reasons. We talked about the realities, and we wrap this message up pretty close to encourage you with the rewards of miracles. Amen. It's all to make you want to slap your grandma. Look up, Betty. In Joshua, wait a minute, I'm just kidding. In Joshua 3, 13 through 15. Grandma want to slap you. We read in this, it shall come about when the soles of the feet of the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan will be cut off, and the waters which are flowing down from above shall stop and stand in one heap. So when the people set out from their tents to cross the Jordan with the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant before the people instead of behind, and when those who carried the Ark came to the Jordan, the feet of the priest carrying the water, the Ark, were dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows his banks all the days of the harvest. When the priest, the Levite, stepped into the river Jordan, the water stood up in a heap. The waters were stopped. Stopped. Even past the city of Adam. The priest went into the middle of the mighty Jordan River, then every man, every woman, boy, and girl passed through the divided river. Does that sound like another story? Yeah. Woo! When Moses crossed over, yeah. as they all passed through the river, where did they find the ark? They found it in the deepest part of the river. They found God in the deepest part of the river. In the deepest, darkest times, when we feel alone, brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus can be more real to us than ever before. Amen. Amen. I can feel it. Yes. He'll be with us in the middle of our problems. He'll be with us in our pains, in our difficulties. And there we will find the ark. Amen. There we'll find Jesus because he will be real to us and real to his people. He'll be there to give us victory. Amen. 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 God will be just as real to us as when we worship him in the church. Woo! Woo! Where are we at? Who's the church? We're the church. Amen. We are. God specializes now, Master, in taking his people through. Every person must pass through the river on the way to Canaan. Every person. If we want to enter the land of abundance, if we want to conquer our Jericho, we must cross our Jordan. Jesus will be there rewarding us with His miraculous power and with His loving presence. God delivered the Israelites through an unconquered problem. And they went through the river and they found the ark. Are we going through the river and we find the Lord? Yeah, mm -hmm. 
He'll not only deliver us through unconquered problems, but the miracles will also be the door. The miracles will be the door for unclaimed promises. I claim Jesus Christ as my Savior. I claim the authority He gives me. I claim the gifts He gives me. I claim the love. I claim the grace and the mercy that Jesus has given me. Amen. I claim it. You claim it yourself, brother and sister. He's given it to you. Claim it in the name of Jesus. Forty years, them people in Israel wandered in the wilderness. But on this day, the miraculous power through the power of God, they were able to claim God's promise and were able to reach out by faith and claim the promises of His Word. I claim it. I claim it in the name of Jesus. The river became the door to the promised land. Amen? Amen. Just as God took them through the river by His miraculous power, He will also take us into the promised land of victorious Christian life. Amen? Amen. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says, Pray without ceasing. That's our powerful tool. Pray without ceasing, brothers and sisters. Pray when you're driving to work. Pray when you get up in the morning first. Pray when you're driving to work. Pray when you're at your lunchtime, wherever you're at. Pray when you get this difficult phone call. You can pray God. He hears you. He hears you. Pray when the when, when surprise is good or bad. Pray to Him on your triumphs. Pray to Him on your defeats. Pray to God. We have that power and authority. Mm. The miraculous, same miraculous power of God took the people through, of Israel through the flooded Jordan. It's available to you. Yes, sir. To us right now. Right now, right here. Right. When we pass through the Jordan, we'll find Jesus more real than ever before in our lives. We'll find Jesus more real. Remember, the requirements, the realities, the reasons, and the rewards of the miraculous power of God at work is in our lives today. Amen. We are warriors, not warriors. Amen? Amen? I want to close with this Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 7. Verse 1. And brothers and sisters, this pertains to you. It pertains to me. Lord, you have searched for me and you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts from afar off. My thoughts. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there, there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. Do you hear what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? Number five, you have hedged behind me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Number six, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I can't attain it, but you give it to me. Where can I go from your spirit or where I can flee from your presence? You can't flee from his presence, brothers and sisters. In verse 1, He searched for you and He knows you. He knows each and every one of you sitting out here today. He knows each and every one of you. When you stand up, when you rise up, when you sit down, He understands your thoughts from afar off. That's number 2. Does that shake you a little bit? Whatever you're thinking and you'll be burning head, He's hearing it. He knows it. He understands it. He knows your path you're taking. knows where you've been and where you're going in number 3. And He's acquainted with all your ways. That ought to shake me up, but now I'm saying, thank you, Lord, for knowing me and changing my ways. As the song we talked sung earlier says, there's not a word on my tongue that you that you don't know is all together. So what does that say, brother and sister, when I'm talking crap about somebody? When I'm bringing somebody down, when I'm gossiping, the Lord knows what's on my tongue. So what is that? Does that appease him or does that please him? Does it please him when you say, I'll pray for that brother and sister? I'll pray for them. Right. You may not can get in the car with them and go somewhere, but you can pray for them. That's when you right. see them somewhere, you be so be civil and sociable and be godly to them because God loves you. Right. And He says, love your enemies as you love yourself. I don't consider nobody my enemy except Satan and his minions. But somebody out here in this congregation does me wrong, and they have, I forgive them. I forgive them. And I love them as God told me to. Now, He didn't say you got to like it or like them. But you love them. Don't do hey, y'all. I like I like all of you. <laughs> and I love all of you. 
You have hedged me behind and before. That means he was with us in the past. He's with us in the future. Amen. Amen. He's always with us. His hand, he lays upon you. That's right. And such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high and I can't attain it. I can't reason it by myself. But I can attain it through the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. And he reveals it. He shows me and teaches me. And then last, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? It ain't happening. God is everywhere. He is the creator. He's the king of this earth. Jesus Christ was his son who came and did things for us that no other person would do. But God sent him here, didn't he? Brothers and sisters, I think that that's enough of the message. I think you get the drift of the miracles that can happen in your life today.